so TVA has been spending money like a drunken sailor on on building new nuclear plants, and I and I use new in quotes because what they've done is they've gone out and they've uh, found um, old nuclear plants that have been uh, been been left to uh, to sit and rust, and they're uh, trying to bring them back to life. Watts Bar is one, and Belafonte is another, and we did a a, a big story last year on Belafonte, and, um, and listeners might want to go back and check that out. But here's a plant that uh, um, was shut down uh, when it was 80 plus percent built. It was put in mothballs uh, for 20 years, and then it was cannibalized. And when they cannibalized it, the NRC uh, terminated their license. And two years later, after it was cannibalized, they went back and they said, whoops, we made a mistake, we want our license back. And we don't want to go through the hearing process. And the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission agreed with the uh, dissenting vote of, um, of a member of the commission called Yasko, who ultimately became chairman. So, so Belafonte uh, had life breathed back into it, but it also had a low ball estimate given to the, the board of directors at TVA that they could do it for one or two billion now, in fact, it's probably up at six billion to seven billion to finish Belafonte, and the board once again is having second thoughts and has mothballed Belafonte again. They got a, a hundred people there, uh, just basically sweeping the floors and keeping the rats from eating the wires. Um, same thing happened at Watts Bar. Watts Bar started with a two billion dollar estimate, and now it's pushing five or six, and it's not done yet. So TVA's got this huge debt it's incurred by building new old nuclear power plants that were canceled years before. Um, I guess it's that uh, that nuclear liability that's pushing TVA pretty close to its debt limit. I think so too. I think uh, you know that's a good example. You know they started Belfont and then they they abandoned it, um, mothballed it basically, like you say, and uh, they ran into trouble when they were trying to license two additional reactors of the new uh, Westinghouse AP-1000 reactor. They were supposed to be a Belfont 3 and 4, um, but uh, they ran into some problems. I think we raised some uh, serious uh, arguments against what they were doing there in its licensing procedure. Partly what happened, they've uh, kind of retrenched and gone back to trying to get licensed, which they have uh, gotten approval from NRC, to do is to, um, is to build Unit 1 <laughs> of that old reactor design, which they had already cannibalized and removed much of the piping and, and whatnot and, uh, for other purposes. Um, but Belfont is uh, predicated on uh, construction, finishing construction of Watts Bar Nuclear, which is just upstream on the Tennessee River on the ten on the Tennessee side, Belfont One <laughs> would be constructed with funds which they would get from selling Watts Bar Nuclear Unit Two. It's all out there in the public record. It's on the website. You can read it, and I'd be happy to talk further about it. But yeah, it, you know there is some funny business going on there, and connecting the dots again. We see two of the nation's largest, most aggressive investor-owned utilities involved in these merger shenanigans, the end result of which is an ousted CEO soon becomes chief of the nation's largest public utility, which may now be put on the auction block. So, Lou, can you tell me how this is going to affect the rate payers? Well, um, there is a rate hike hearing coming up uh, for Duke Energy, uh, the third uh, rate hike before the North Carolina Utilities Commission since 2009, which would boost average residential rates by 13.9% and uh, small business rates up to 10.7%. Um, these rates would be 30% higher than they were in 2009. So here's Duke Energy, now Duke Progress Energy, um, still uh, boosting rates here. And there's a hearing coming up um, an evidentiary hearing coming up on July the 8th in Raleigh. And uh, we and other groups um, 
in in the Carolinas are are challenging that rate hike. Thirty percent over four years couldn't in the they, middle of a recession. Couldn't couldn't they take that from the forty four million they just gave to the CEO? I mean, it's really outrageous what's going on here. A protected monopoly with captured rate payers, Duke seeking guaranteed minimum profits of eleven point two twenty five percent, eleven point eleven and a quarter percent, which way exceeds market level returns. My God, that's amazing. The, the um, so the hearing is coming up in North Carolina, and it's on the seventh. Did I hear you say? It is on the eighth of July, which is a Monday. We'll look forward to hearing your melodious voice there, uh, uh, protecting the ratepayers of North Carolina. On the on the other issue, that of the TVA ratepayers, if um, if TVA were to be sold. Uh, and they they would be uh, less protected than they are now, so it's likely that their rates would go up too. I would uh, that would be my guess as well. Uh, TVA has its own board of directors. It's a little bit different than the corporate structure of the investor-owned utilities. I was at the Duke Energy uh, shareholders meeting earlier this year. It was my first Duke Energy shareholder meeting, and I came out of there shaking my head. There because it seemed like a dictatorship. I mean, uh, Jim Rogers was in total control, and even the people that had stock, voting uh, stock, and could participate in the meeting, basically treated like mushrooms. I mean, there was all the business was handled cut and dried, and uh, before he even opened the floor to any questions from from uh, investors. I mean, that's not a public hearing. That's a, that's a Securities Exchange Commission-governed type meeting. TVA's board operates a little differently than that. It is more open to the public. I've been to TVA board meetings and they're held in various places or in their service area. Basically a public hearing which is held at every uh, board meeting, usually before the meeting starts of TVA. The end result may not be much different. <laughs> it seems like it and I know a lot of folks in uh, that have been dealing with TVA over the years think that TVA doesn't follow any rules but its own rules. But there is there is quite a difference in the atmosphere, certainly. And I think you're seeing differences in the results, too, because I think if the, the educational efforts of people in the grassroots level in Tennessee Valley Authority's service area are an indication, you know, the company is not proceeding with plans to build Belfont 3 and 4. Um, it is a major hawk, but it's a different corporate culture. It certainly is. Um, but be that as it may, the you know TVA is this uh, somehow a desirable property to um, some kind of private entity such as investor-owned utility. And if it's not Duke in progress, then who else would have the kind of bucks necessary? What makes TVA attractive is they have a lot of customers. And, and they're, they're captured customers, too. It's not like a, a grocery store where you can pick, if you don't like one grocery store, you can move to another. So that's why Duke bought Progress, was to get the customers. And the same thing could easily be said for you know buying TVA. The, the other thing I wanted to talk about is that Progress, Progress Duke and TVA have uh, almost every ice containment plant in the country. Um, the ice containment, in my opinion, is the second most dangerous containment we've got in the country. The, uh, the first is the, the BWR uh, Mark I containment like Fukushima Daiichi. And we've got 23 of those. And, you know, I'm on record as saying that those plants should be shut down because that containment design is just not safe. But the, the second worst design are these ice containments. And uh, TVA's got a couple and, uh, and Duke's got a couple. And I think between them, they come up with seven out of the nine ice containments are owned right there in the uh, in the southeast. What are you guys doing about the ice containments? Well, can you first fill us in on, on what the ice containments are? Yeah, that's a good idea. It is not a giant igloo made of ice. What, what it is is it's, it's a, a nuclear containment is, uh, is concrete with a steel liner. But this ice containment is much smaller than normal nuclear containments. And what they did to drop the pressure in the reactor is that they, uh, after an accident, is that they run the steam through ice that's uh, attached to the sides of the containment. And the ice melts and, and cools the steam so that 
the pressure shock to the containment is, is lower. Now, anybody who's put ice in your ice box for 40 years realizes that it's not there when you go to look for it. Um, and these containments are designed to hold ice for 40 years. Ice sublimates, which means it just disappears right into the air over time. So the yeah, ice containments over the years have had all sorts of problems. The ice sticks together, the ice disappears. There's all sorts of technical um, fixes that are designed to keep the ice in, in, um, in good working order. It's never been tried, thank God. There's never been an accident to see if it would work. But uh, to my mind, it's, um, it's way too complicated and way too small. If the ice doesn't work, the containment's too small to handle the pressure shock. And that's why they're so dangerous. Yeah, that's why they're so dangerous. And uh, So anyway, there's a couple that TVA owns, and there's a bunch that, that Duke owns, and uh, they're essentially uh, all in that same part of the country. That's right. It's a complicated system you just described. I mean, 2,000 baskets of ice. Uh, with with doors and channels which get stuck, settling of the structures and whatnot, and and ice jamming, you know, various parts of the machinery. But this is all done. This was done in, as a cost saving measure because concrete and steel are expensive to construct, and so they got away with a much lower strength containment building, that dome shaped building that you see over the reactors. And so it's got half of the strength it would need to withstand um, a typical pressure rise in a plausible accident. Uh, and this, this comes from uh, outfits such as Sandia National Laboratories. They did a study on ice condensers years ago. And uh, so there is a fundamental problem with this ice condenser technology. And you're right, there are two of them at um, Catawba Nuclear Power Station, operated by Duke in South Carolina. There are two of them operating at McGuire in North Carolina, also run by Duke. Uh, there are two operating at Sequoia Nuclear Station, which is in Soddy Daisy, Tennessee, just north of uh, Chattanooga. Uh, there's one at Watts Bar, and there's one under construction. So there's a um you know, potential, well, obviously there's a construction liability with, with uh, Watts Bar, but on top of that, we've got the, uh, uh, the second worst containment in the country. Essentially, all our eggs are in one basket down in the southeast because that's where these containments uh, proliferate. Uh, there, there is two up at uh, D.C. Cook uh, in, the, in the Midwest as well, but like I said, seven, seven out of the nine or eight out of the ten, depending if you count Watts Bar, are, are in there. So uh, what's going on with Sequoia and the, uh, and the ice containment issue? Well, a, f a few months ago, um, Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League uh, filed an intervention with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission because um, TVA had submitted an application to renew the license of the Sequoia nuclear power plant reactors. And so we raised a series of safety questions, a series of environmental questions having to do with the extension of the reactor license beyond the 40-year period for uh, 20 additional years, which would mean through uh, 2041. License renewals are tightly constricted in terms of what you may consider, but I think we have eight strong arguments, some of them were uh, buttressed by your expert testimony, Arnie, and so those are outstanding. Uh, and in fact, we had the possibility of a of oral arguments to happen this week. Uh, this is the week of uh, June the 26th, and uh, which may not happen after all. But in other words, we're waiting for the for the shoe to drop. We've heard back from TVA. We've heard back from Nuclear Regulatory Commission's staff attorneys. Um, on these arguments, but I hope some of these arguments survive uh, because there are questions which are fundamental to the operation of the power station itself based on the ice condenser containment. And then there are other issues which I think also augur uh, for admission of the arguments and, uh, and becoming a party to intervention um, in the license, similar to what we've done before.